And we're going to start off. <laughs> Thank you. We are going to start off with Lawrence Sky Elementary School um, talking to us about their Wonderland Garden. This is something actually that I uh, am familiar with because that is my kids' elementary school. And I was part of the original group when it was just a giant dirt lot 12 years ago, oh, wow. um, going through the process of actually turning it into a garden. <laughs> So, hold on. Okay. My name is Amber Barnes. I'm the garden chair at Sonoran Sky Elementary. Uh, we call it Wonderland, so it gets a little confusing. A lot of people are like, what's Wonderland? Um, Wonderland is the name of the garden. So, uh, it's our outdoor classroom space and I think I would venture to say that it is a huge point of pride for our school. And when Megan asked me to talk, I was like, awesome, absolutely, because I feel like if everybody else in the district knew about what we've accomplished and they need help or support in trying to get that sort of thing started for themselves, then like, yes, please reach out to us free of charge. Like, we'll come and help you, you know, anything from figuring out funding and whatnot. But essentially, um, our garden is 100% PTO volunteer donation funded. So we get no funding from the school of any sort. Um, and when I took over two years ago, Michelle Carroll had been doing this job for, it was seven years. She was for seven straight years. And so I think it's been, the garden's been there for roughly 12. And Karen, and I forget her last name, honestly, but she started it. And so she designed the garden beds and whatnot, but since then I've taken over, I've kind of tried to put everything on like watering systems, et cetera, but we have just, it's, it, it's prolific. We have a butterfly habitat. We have a desert bed. We have six garden beds. They're huge. We have this guy right here, which is our little um, art totem pole flower bed. We're turning into a strawberry bed. Uh, we actually also have an amphitheater in the back for the students to congregate um teachers bring students out to just read sometimes and then we have an outdoor classroom and we have a koi pond but it's got goldfish not koi but it's a koi pond because people don't like calling it a goldfish pond so but it's actually it's a very nice space and it's owned by district this is this is all i know it's owned by district so technically it's not even part of the elementary school campus yeah it's very it's very interesting so my job is to keep it growing, green, clean, get the volunteers, et cetera, uh, funding, trying to, we have a new community business partner this year, uh, Summer Winds. If you've ever been to their nursery, you know they do some great stuff there. They are literally paying for all our supplies, all our flowers, all our plants, uh, our trellises. Like we have this amazing, we pitched to them and they loved it. And so... Yeah, funding wise, we're doing really good. We do have a full time garden teacher. You can go to the next slide. Full time garden teacher who um, has also managed to connect to uh, the one before that. Thank you. Uh, so, Blue Watermelon Project is a really cool program that is also uh, basically it's um, you have to apply. It's like a scholarship program. And Michelle got through to them and they love what we're doing. So now she does cooking classes with the kids and Blue Watermelon Project supplies us with most of our like kits and food parts and chefs make videos for the kids to watch. Um, uh, also new this year, I knew a couple years ago when I first came on, we started doing our, our art walk, our art show every year is out in the garden. Um, so that's quite lovely. And then we do monthly lunch in the garden, and I started a farmer's market this year because we had a lot of produce that we were just basically leaving in the staff lounge, and some of it was going to waste, so now we sell it. So lots of great things. Um, this is the farmer's market spread. They go onto the PTO website, pre-order, and then we deliver, and it's once a week. So this is all sort of what I try to juggle and, and, and manage um, with a little bit of time that I have, and it seems to be going pretty well. So yeah, we love it. It's amazing. Parents love it. Oh, a curriculum. Um, so this is more of a Michelle question, but if you have any questions about her curriculum, she teaches classes with um, all grade levels. The younger they are, the more classes they get. 
and she works with each individual teacher on schedule. So it's not a part of the curriculum in the school. It's more like a, a special added bonus, but it is during the school day. So she, you know, organizes that with each individual teacher, but the kindergarten students get during growing season, which is, you know, six months out of the year when the weather's nice, they get probably three garden classes a month. So it's almost as often as specials. And then first and second grade, a little less. By fifth and sixth grade, they only have a couple um, segments, but theirs are like three or four days long. So right now she's doing solar ovens with fifth grade. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we do, yes. We yeah. have a STEM teacher. Yep. The, our, how many fund the garden? Oh, uh, we pay for it. The, the PTO, PTO, the parents, yeah. Um, I think she takes a meager salary, I would say. Um, and then all the extra stuff she has to buy and whatnot, I we find ways to get funding to cover that. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is this year, or maybe you do, but in, I, in the past, the Wonderland Garden has been 25 to 30 percent of the overall PTO operating budget. That is still roughly correct. It's a little less, but that's only because now summer winds get to sell our stuff for free. So we transitioned because we were having a company farmyard help us with planting and whatnot. Now I've managed to get the garden volunteers and I have the, of the manpower, which took a minute, but now we are doing all our own planting and maintaining. So, um, so yeah, lower costs. That was my big goal. Uh, so really the bulk of it's what Michelle gets paid, which is worth every penny. The teachers beg for it. So, um, but I want to say it's like, I don't know, roughly around 28,000 would be what she gets plus like a couple thousand for supplies a year. If anyone's so, considering doing that on their campus, the, the process of getting a funded teacher approved by the, not a teacher, that's the wrong word, getting a funded contractor, a funded contractor is, is a process. Yeah. Um, so, but PTOs can do that, but PTOs cannot fund a teacher and you cannot fund an instructor. Can do a contract. Mm -hmm. I know, right? I know she has extra availability. She'd kill me for saying this. <laughs> if any other school wanted to hire her part time, I think she has a smidge of availability. So, because <laughs> she doesn't work full full time, right? So, garden classes are like a couple days here, a couple days there. So, yeah. it's really cool. I have uh, a new thing that we learned first grade oh, you? and this is the only thing I've heard about it. They before. are the kids are crazy over it. It's 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 an amazing. It's one of the main reasons we chose to go to the school. My family, I have three kids, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I visited like five years ago when I was considering school, but I almost was willing to drive the twenty minutes to get there versus walking to my current because it was so cool. So yeah, it's cool. it was great there. So instead, you guys put in your own. Put in our own, but yeah. it's nothing. Yeah. Not compared to this. And the kids, it's amazing the things they learn that you don't even realize. I was not exposed to any of this as a child. I didn't learn any of this until I was an adult. And all I can think is, why? Why do people think you can't grow things in areas where you can grow everything here? Literally everything. And we have two growing seasons. So the kids, they just can't handle it. They love it so much. And think outside, too. Like, how many schools have the opportunity to get the kids outside like that? And so I want to I want to see it at more schools. Do you have yeah. an irrigation system? Uh -huh. How are you and is the district paying that? District pays it. We do pay that. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure they do this. Okay. And we do what we want, and I hope it stays that way. So, um. But no, I mean we, we I'm very good about conserving water. I do not. I'm not crazy. Like I turn the water down because the plants, you know, you have to water them the proper way. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But the district like rents it out, right? Like you can rent it out or no? I've never been, I've never been queried the, on the, the space, like that. The space can be rented out and it has been in the past. It was part of the uh, Scottsdale garden tour about seven years ago, which was a massive all around the valley, well, all around Scottsdale. Um, 
trip with people and they came and yes, it can be rented out versus by via the facilities form, but there, there, there is a, a relationship when the garden was created. Part of the process was that the PTO had to dedicate it to yeah. the district, had to mm -hmm. give it over. So that made it a facility that would be able to be rented out. Yeah, so it is an interesting relationship because of the insurance. And then we have to get a facility use form and filled out every time, which actually we talked about. Yeah. Any other questions? Do any schools you guys know of that are like looking at doing something like this in the district? Yeah? Oh, we have a garden. We have a guide on us, and so I volunteered to kind of take it up. I need to talk to you. You are welcome to reach out to me as much or as little as you want or need, and I can tour you. And I mean, so the reason why I came on as such a valuable asset is because I also garden in my home, but I'm also really handy with like irrigation, and I was an engineer in my past life, so like I'm a problem solver. So uh, just I've just grabbed it, and I've had so much fun like fixing things and figuring out things and making it more efficient, et cetera. So yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. So we can, UPC can share your contact. hundred percent, yes. Okay, I know Megan. My hope is to spread, but... like, you know, make this more fun. For, for the people online, can we oh, give them your, your email? It's wonderland yes. at, don't, you don't have to type it in. We're just telling them. It's wonderland at sskypto.com. Yep. And that's, if it's me or somebody else takes over, it's always, that's the email forever, so. It comes to me right now. Thank you. Anything else? No. I think you've got someone who will get you after. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Catholic. Being below. Beach. <laughs> All right. So we did something fun this past fall. Um, we took bingo and put it on a tech. We had our little bingo committee meeting and uh, I was all excited for like, okay, nice, simple bingo. We're just gonna be low key. And then somebody said, let's do glow in the dark. And I said, oh. okay, that's gonna be a lot of work, but it's fun. <laughs> so we had to do it, we had to do it. Um, so we did glow in the dark bingo. This is a little bit of our, of our setup. Um, we had over 200 people in our cafeteria um, we are, I'm a desert cove, so we're on the south side of the district, um, 32nd Street and Catholic area. We are a um, targeted Title I school, not full Title I, but targeted Title I school. One of our fourth grade uh, teachers is a DJ, so uh, he always uh, emcees our events, which is super fun. They absolutely love it. Um, and uh, we rented black lights from Up My Way, which was a really great place. We got two big black lights for 200 bucks and they lit up the whole stage. Um, got some glow in the dark daubers. Um, you know, since we're a Title I school this year, this, this time, we kind of migrated from a selling big family packs to buying a whole pizza. We want to be able to accommodate single moms with kid would get a slice of pizza. So instead of doing 25 or $30 admission, we were able to get people in the door for four to five dollars, um, which was nice. And um, it was super fun. It was a lot of work. I think it was just fun. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else is there? Did you see? This is a um, an Instagram reel. If you want to take a look at um, a little video of some of the pictures of the event. Um, oh, that's what we also did. So it wasn't just bingo. This was the fun part. Was uh, we'd play a game of bingo, and then we'd have a two or three song dance break. So all the kids would get up and dance, and all the grandparents in back. <laughs> but the parents had somewhere to sit. The kids had somewhere to wiggle. Um, we got through only I want to say like four bingo games, but it's. <laughs> we tried to have as many prizes as we could for as many prizes. Um, yeah, that's it. But it was super fun. And, uh, if anybody has any questions, um, info at Desert Coast PTO. Level. What do you use for pizza? Uh, we use borrows. They do twenty five percent off for um for schools, and uh, we picked up from. Where's that on 40th Street and Greenway location? And they were great. They were, 
Yeah, really? Yeah. I, promise you. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was just trying, like, trying to think of the borrow's location. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. That's all? Right. Rayhawk Ray had a bunch to share with us, and we. Um, we're here to share the Greyhawk Give It Back program. All of us are here are here because we enjoy volunteering most likely. And while children might not completely get the sense of what volunteering is, we know that they could still learn how to help others at our early age. Um, at Greyhawk, we know that getting them involved early and often is a key to help them continue to do this throughout their lives. Um, Greyhawk Gives Back was organized by the PTO and Student Council, and it offers opportunities to the students and families to volunteer. Uh, the first step is food recovery program. We're going to loop back to that because we want to go into that in a little more detail. Um, I'll slow down a little bit, sorry. <laughs> Feed My Starving Children, we schedule two opportunities at their facility in Mesa, where they learn about poverty and get the chance to package up meals for those in need worldwide. School yard beautification, two Sundays throughout the school year. The children come to the school, they clean up the school yard, they help tidy our outdoor classroom and tackle on any projects that need attention. Echo Mountain is our sister school. A few years ago, we adopted the holiday gift drive. It allowed our students the opportunity to buy gifts for the Echo Mountain students. The PTO gets involved because we schedule a wrapping event day. It's where the classes come in on 30 minute intervals. We provide wrapping paper, tape, bows, and it gives the kids the chance to wrap their gifts. And it really gives them ownership and you see the excitement on their face when they're saying, look what I got for so-and-so, and I never get to wrap at home. So it kind of brings the reason for the season. Um, another part of our relationship with Echo Mountain, a couple of years ago, we helped support their teacher appreciation week. We had a fundraiser where parents donated small gifts like books, puzzles, jewelry, scarves. We hand that over to the principal and he's able to give that to the staff of approximately 100 at the school. And then we went a little further last year and we offered a breakfast for my hop on um, one of the days during the teacher appreciation week. The clothes bin, I think many of you are aware of this because it's been presented to the UPC previously. Um, for every, oh, there's some pictures of the opportunity, but we have a quick few. Um, for every pound donated of textiles, the school gets back seven cents, and we're looking to put that back to the Grand Hawkins back program this year by utilizing it for the Eckermill School. Lastly, the V at Greyhawk, that's an assisted living facility in our neighborhood. Um, the art room was, um, started up a paper recycling program in the class this year. We noticed that a lot of beautiful artwork was being tossed in the garbage. So the teachers put a box in the room where the kids can put their artwork. It then gets picked up by the PTO. We put a little tag on it saying like, we hope this artwork brightens your day from a Grand Hawk Elementary student. It's given to the director and then they in turn give it to the memory care facility patient. So you can see like all this artwork right here. We hope that it's on the wall of somebody in the memory care facility and it brings a smile to their day. Um, our music teachers really done a great job with our choir, so we took it on the road. In December, they went to the two um, assisted living facilities and they performed their holiday songs for them. And it was just so nice to see the residents like singing along, dancing to the music. And what even really was special, you can see right here, the one-on-one -on -one interaction. So the kids went table to table to talk to the residents. And you could see the smile on both of their faces, just over here in the conversations, like the fact that these elementary school students are holding conversations with people that they don't know that um, are in a different age range than them, obviously. And one cute story I wanted to point out about that experience, one of the residents took a music sheet 
sat down at the piano, started playing. Then all the students just organically gathered around the piano and started sewing along with her. So it just really put a stamp on this is why we're doing this. We're giving back. Um, all these volunteer opportunities can be found on our membership toolkit page. There's a specific tab that outlines all the details about each of these opportunities, and there's a link to sign up. And I still didn't slow down, sorry. <laughs> We're going to loop back to the food recovery program. We're going to kick it off by showing you a video of what it entails, and then Darby's going to take it over and talk about the steps she took to implement it out of the food recovery program. At the end of lunch, students put their unopened lunch items into the refrigerator. Once a week, these items are collected by a parent volunteer and delivered to Harvest Compassion. If you would like to volunteer, you may do so by going to the membership toolkit and check under the volunteer tab. Help Greyhawk make a difference. Greyhawk's food recovery program. At the end of lunch, students put their unopened lunch items. Yeah. Okay, so just a little history of the uh, food recovery program. Um, I don't know if you guys know Rhonda Albus, but she used to be involved. Um, and she paved the way for our program at Greyhawk. So she fought for years against the district and, uh, and her school to try to get just basically to save food that was going to go in the trash anyway. So, um, so I have to thank her. And uh, so her school is St. Piper. Um, so and she was literally digging through dumpsters to like have data to show how much food was wasted. So she finally got it approved in 2019 and, and Jen and I were able to uh, met her and she helped us launch it in that, that fall of 2019. Um, and I was shocked to learn to run into resistance at our school, uh, the PTO and the admin. Uh, I guess they're, they're just afraid of liability and change and all that. So, um, but we did get it launched anyway. And, um, Literally, we would stand by the trash can and have, you know, educate the kids on what could be saved. It has to be cafeteria purchased, unopened food. And then we, we moved it to a refrigerator. And then we have, um, then we would donate it once a week to the to our food bank that we partnered with. Um, with COVID, it did slow us down a little bit, change things. Now the duty aids are putting it in the fridge. Um, before we had the students putting it in, which I think is really cool because it gives them a little more ownership of the program. Um, so I'd recommend that if you are interested in starting this at your school. Uh, and then uh, one morning, like the video said, one morning a week, we have sign up, parents um, sign up and their family can come in and pack it before school. And then the um, parent will take it to the Harvest Compassion Centers who we partnered with. And they welcome more donations. So if anybody wants to partner with them, they would love that. Um, and they love the school kind of donations because it's easy food for the people in need that are getting it, and they can eat it or drink it right then and not have to go home and prepare it. So um, so that's the history. And then, so now, let's, yeah, the same slide. So we were able to save, like, we saved hundreds of pounds of food, I would say a month. So it's just incredible. And we have a very small school. So it's just stuff they're forced to get if you buy lunch and you can't take it with you. So we collect it and you know, give it to those in um, so how to, so basically you, you would get with your parent group and come up with a plan. The um, district has a, a donation guidelines, so you just get a hold of this, which I can send you. Um, and then you can find what food bank, again, you can partner with any food bank, but Harvest Compassion has been an amazing partner. They love it. They're so grateful every time we take it. Um, and then logistics of just who's going to run it and how often we're going to take it, which I'd say weekly based on expiration dates. Um, and then just to know there's a good Samaritan law that protects um, any donations that you make so the school is not liable for it. Um, and then you would take that plan to get approval. You want your principal on board, obviously. And then the school so um, site council has to approve it as well. So we did that. And then you have to have a fridge to hold it. And then we have coolers for transporting it. So we were able to get that all donated from Rhonda, actually. And um, so we're happy to help you get those donations. This is that would it makes the cost almost zero for the for the PTO program. Um, and then just launch it. So we'd have a launch day, which we need to bring back. Um, but educate the kids, get them excited to let them know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and so mainly the cost is time by 
members, but it's so rewarding. The parents have given us wonderful feedback on like you get to see as you're donating it and they're taking it on the shelves and the people are shopping and tasting the food and it's it's good. That's it. Oh yeah. Hey, I have a question. Is is this your weekly? So that was for the first two weeks. Two oh, as a two. But, week total. Yes, because we it was like the, it was like well, at the beginning of our program. But yes, I mean that was. Isn't that crazy how much you and can kids are encouraged like you eat your food, you're yeah. growing, you need it for your mind, your body. But if you didn't get the chance to eat everything during lunchtime or you just weren't interested in a night on, that's when it goes in the refrigerator. So they're not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not allowed. Allowed. I don't know if all schools are, but the, if they get school food, they cannot bring it to their pastor. Yeah. They have to throw it out. Whether it's a milk, orange juice, applesauce. She's sick, she's sick, so they're going to throw it away anyways. And they have to take it. They don't have a choice to say, I don't want it today. They have to, like, they have to fill it with such a waste. Yeah, yeah, and this isn't, so this is the food we even get from the cafeteria leftovers. We're not allowed to take, like, the lunch lady has leftovers. We can't take that. This is just the stuff that was already purchased and was going to be good. So we're not taking away for it. Can you share with us like the location of Harvest just to give people a general idea of it might be a good for instance? Um, it's on Thunderbird and Tatum, right in that area. And they have another location too, but we always they do. They have two other locations, and each location is open. So the one on Tatum and Thunderbird, they take donations Wednesday and Saturday morning. Then another location takes like Tuesday and Thursday, so depending on what. They you plan on having it picked up you or where your school is, you can choose a location based on that. And the program overall, we have um, a number of opportunities because we know that families and students have different interests like with their availability, what they can sign up for. So we kind of wanted to round it out to not just focus on one or two things I'm giving back. And we're hoping that we make the connection with the kids that not <laughs> with helping others. Uh, other people don't always feel good, but you feel good as well. So we're hoping by planting the seed at a young age that it grows on. In a in a full circle type of thing, um, students from Paradise Valley High School volunteer at Harvest Compassion as part of the group that uh, sorts the food that's received and puts it on the shelves. Harvest Compassion does a shopping experience for their members that come through where their individuals that need assistance are able to go through a mock store and they pull items off the shelves that they are interested in eating uh, and students from paradise valley high school help with all of that so it's kind of a full service all the way up in the district and we try to advertise this program a little more this year. So we have a community publication that we had a spread put in to kind of detail all what we do. And then we also have these little stickers made to put on folders or water bottles. And even in the lost and found, when we were looking at it, like kids were actually putting on the water bottles. So it was nice to see it kind of just pop up around. Can we put your, do you have uh, the, the email that I have for you guys? Yeah, or do you have a do. Oh, the UPC right. one. Yeah, uh, so we'll put UPC at grayhawkpto.com if anybody has questions because there is a, a, a night, a, a project, and there's a existing district guidelines document yes. that'll help guide you through this. And highly recommend it, and we'll be at the vendor showcase for more information. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving into our middle schools, and Shay has done a great job. They're going to represent middle schools with a bunch of interesting stuff here. Yes. So hi, everybody at home. <laughs> I'm usually at home watching this um, meeting, so I'm going to talk really loud so you can hear me. Um, and hi, board members. I'm here. I told you I'd come. Uh, so I'm from Shea Middle. I'm Erin McDonald. I'm from Shea Middle School, um, but I'm also a Mercury Mine uh, parent. I have a, a fourth grader there. And I've been the president of that PTO, and I'm still on that PTO. So a lot of what I learned that we applied to Shea, um, I learned at Mercury Mine. So I want to give them a shout out. So middle school. All right, go to the next slide. 
So middle school is pretty horrible, right? Um, so I don't know about your middle school experience or your experience with your middle schooler, but it is terrifying. The eye rolling, the door slamming, the hormones, all of the things. So it's a little bit tricky navigating, you know, you're in this small community school, your elementary school, and then you get to middle school and they're like, just roll them at the curb. You know, we'll take it from here. And I was like, whoa, I don't know you people. You know, so I wanted to get involved. Um, obviously, that's just my nature. So I joined the board as um, uh, as an incoming seventh grade parent. And um, I had another, uh, a couple other women that I had worked with before at Mercury Mine join the board. So I knew we could handle it. But coming into a new school, you don't know what it is they're expecting from you. You don't know who to ask questions. You don't even know where the bathrooms are. So there's a lot of kind of learning that goes on. Um, so we learned a lot that first year. So go ahead. So when I started, when I came into the middle school, um, they had a membership-based PTO. So you would pay, what, like $25 for a gold membership. And that included like a lanyard and a ticket to a dance. And so the PTO had to manage like all of these, like who got a lanyard, who got a sticker and who paid their membership fee. And, and then when we went to sell dance tickets, who's a silver membership, who's a gold membership. It was just like a lot of work. And we were like, whoa. So, um, and we only had 58 people. <laughs> that, I mean, that's not that many people. So we only raised a thousand dollars. So like, is the juice worth the squeeze kind of thing? Um, that's what um, my board member always, we always talk about. So that was a kind of a learning curve. If you go to the next slide. So we did this fundraiser. We did this readathon um, and with one, of, with one of those companies that you give a percentage to and all of those things. Um, Shea Middle School received 75% of the profit and they got all these like weird prizes and like kind of that junk that comes home that you're like, oh, great, slime, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Um, and we only raised $2,865. So, and then like we had to divvy out all the prizes and like who won. And again, is the juice worth the squeeze there? Like it's not. And we only got 75% of that. So that's annoying. So next slide. But we did um, give them the option of if they raised, you know, $3,000 or whatever we set as a goal that we would sign the principal. I highly recommend signing your principal. Um, <laughs> Mr. Lawrence is amazing. He he did it twice at first lunch and second lunch, and the winner of each readathon got to pour the bucket on him. Um, I think our janitor had the most fun pouring um, on him. That's my daughter and her friend um, sliming him. So after the first lunch, he changed into dry clothes. And then did it again. He had his own sign. He made a, a sign and he sat there and he was like such a good sport. So thank you, Principal Lawrence. Um, so next slide. All right. So in that same year, we did, uh, we threw two, two dances, a fall dance and a spring dance. And then we did an eighth grade only dance. So dances are just... Um, I mean, it's a middle school dance. Did they really dance? No, <laughs> they just stood around. But I didn't know they weren't gonna dance. Um, so we got a DJ and we got pizza and like, not only did they not eat pizza, but they didn't dance and they just stood around. So we, so we learned a lot. We had like all this leftover pizza and, but they really like Dr. Pepper. So we sold all the Dr. Pepper. So it's like this learning curve, right? You're just learning. So, and I didn't know how to throw a middle school dance. So I went to the student council meeting and I was like, student council, you are the heartbeat of the school. What do you want for a dance? What, what kind of theme do you want? What, um, do you want it to be fancy? Do you want uh, pizza? Do you, what kind of drinks do you guys like? What kind of chips should we buy? What kind of candy? And that was the first time anybody had ever come to a student council meeting and asked them what they wanted. Like, duh, you know? <laughs> Um, because at our school, we're splitting the funds with the student council. So all the ticket sales, ticket sales are $5 and the PTO gets half of that and the student council gets half of that. So the student council's job is to like, give me all their ideas and give me all their, you know, cool energy. And then I make the flyers and um, the student council makes um, uh, posters and puts them all over school. And then they sell tickets at lunch and they do all that stuff. We have these really cool wristbands um, that were tickets. For, um, for both of those dances. So they wanted to do a fancy dance where you dressed up. So that was the fancy dance. And then this was the casual Valentine's Day dance um, where the girls wore dresses and sneakers and it was so cute. 
And then the eighth grade um, graduation dance is kind of uh, self-explanatory. Um, but the thing about dances is we is is setting a budget and then staying within that budget because you want to do all these decorations and all this stuff and a photo background, but like really like paring it down to what they care about. Like when it came down to it, it was like the candy, the drinks, and and that was about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and when we when I opened the gym and let them in there, the boys go, "Can we play basketball?" <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, it's a dance. Like, go dance." So, um, our SRO officer, um, Officer Tom, was really instrumental in getting all the kids out there, like in like kind of a dance formation, and like they started some cool dances. And Principal Lawrence is out there dancing, and so. Sometimes it just takes them a little bit to warm up. So that first dance, we ran it, um, I think only like an hour and a half or something, maybe it was, yeah, an hour and a half. And the kids were like, it wasn't enough time. It wasn't enough time because they started dancing right at the end. So the next time we did the dance, we moved it to two hours. Um, and then we didn't sell pizza that second time because they didn't eat pizza. So um, that is the dances, okay. Um, so how it was that year, um, it was that Shay, um, PTO was under the umbrella of the high school PTO booster club. So that means we didn't have our own 501c3. Oh. We used their EIN number when we fundraised. So it was kind of awkward when you'd go to Sonic and be like, Hey, we want to have a dine out. Our name is Shay Scorpion PTO, but here's our information. So it was a little bit like awkward and chunky. Um, and then that check would have to go to the high school. Then the high school would have to cut out the check. So it was just always the way it was. And I didn't question it because that's just what we're doing. Um, and then some district questions came up and it was just kind of like weird. And then we were like, you know what? To better fundraise, we need to establish our own 501c3. So um, that is what we did. I'm not going to go through the process, the steps to establish your own 501c3. I think we're all, you know, probably there. Um, but there are some steps. And then um, one thing that we didn't think of, um, if you go by a shortened name for your legal name, like the our legal name is Shay Scorpion Parent Teacher Organization. But if we get a check written to Shay PTO, um, we just had to do something about a trademark file, something, I don't know, it's all yeah. online. But um, yeah, so once we established our 501c3, we were able to start a spirit wear company um, we set up our prize community rewards, all the things that you're already doing, keep going. Um, and then we uh, we started helping more. I started realizing like um, the kids can get more involved, right? They're at an age, seventh and eighth graders, where they should be kind of taking ownership of their school. So they're helping at the seventh grade welcome day. They're helping at um, any event that we have. We're having students sign up. We also have a wake up club at Shea that's um, put on by our um student resource officer and uh, officer Tom, and he's awesome. So anytime I need volunteers, I shoot him an email. I say, hey, do the wake up kids wanna help me do this? And he'll get them out there. We also sell snacks at all the festival sports because Shay's the host for all those things. Um, and that's always a, an easy sell, you know, now that we know what they like to drink and <laughs> what they like to um, sell. All right, next slide. So the next year, now we're a 501c3. So that, this is this year. So we take everything we've learned at Mercury Mine and we just throw it at Shea, but like in a smaller, you know, little capacity. So we use Pledge Star because they take less um, of our percentages and we just do a straight up ask. We're just asking parents for money. We're, we're not going to give you like indivi individual little prizes. We set school-wide prizes. So um, for $2,000, if the school, as a school raises $2,000, I'm gonna buy them a new mascot costume because I'm really a fan of mascot costumes and we didn't have one. Um, I bought the one at Mercury Mine and I have to wear it now. <laughs> um, uh, if we hit $3,000, we're gonna do music at lunch. $4,000, we're gonna have a school-wide popsicle party. Uh, $5,000, we're gonna have a movie day in English. $6,000, we're gonna add popcorn and candy day, candy to that movie day in English. And if we reach $7,000, Principal Lawrence will complete a challenge that is voted on by the students. So we made this Google form and I, I said, you want to dye his hair pink? You want to duct tape him, tape him to the wall? You want him to kiss a pig? Um, you want him to sumo wrestle another teacher? I think there was a third option, but I can't remember. Oh, dunk tank, dunk tank, that was it. 
So they voted on their own prize. Um, and then we sent this home, go to the next slide. And then every, you know, we're using social media. We're having um, challenges. This is the class with the most registered users wins this. And then we're immediately giving those, those donuts out like the next day, because that creates a buzz, right? You want them to all be like, oh, you guys won the donuts. Uh. And then um, we're having all these different kind of um, challenges, we call them, if you go to the next slide. So the goal, so it's like happening. So um, we had 16 students register the first day. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Mercury Mine raises like $5,000 in 12 hours, you know? So it's, it's, you can't, it's apples and oranges, right? Um, but yeah, they made this goal. Awesome. So I bought that outfit. Um, yes. for <laughs> Principal Lawrence to wear, <laughs> and I immediately, I already had it, you know, I immediately give it to him, he immediately walks out at lunch wearing it, and this place goes crazy. Next slide. There he is. <laughs> um, he's just such a good sport. Um, he is the best, best, best. Um, all right, so it, it keeps happening. We deliver popsicles that day. Um, we just buy a bunch of popsicles and give them out, and they're they're coming up. They're, Can I have another one? No, it's everybody gets one. Um, and then the popcorn, we got it from um, uh, Harkins uh, and delivered it. And uh, they had a movie day. Next slide. Um, and then the sumo wrestling. Um, they voted and they wanted to see sumo wrestling. So that's what we did. Next slide. We rented a sumo ring and they had an assembly right before Christmas. And Principal Lawrence and another teacher and the vice principal and another teacher ruffled each other we did two rounds and the place went bananas <laughs> all right so that year uh this year this is this year current year we did a fall dance um that's all, everybody actually dancing line dancing happening they love the like the cha-cha slide and all those like group songs you know um coming up we're gonna have our night at the disco so <laughs> go ahead to the next one so this is like last year versus this year so um only 66 kids signed up on Pledge Star, 66 kids. You know, like if all of those kids had fundraised, like, can you imagine the goal we would have made? Um, so it's still a struggle, but like maybe it'll get easier next year. You know, like those kids will be like, Pledge Star, yep, know what I'm doing. And like the Mercury Mind parents, they know what they're doing. They're they're right on Pledge Star. So I don't, I'm not sure where the disconnect is and we're, we're working on it, uh, but we'll just we'll just get better and stronger. So we've had some dine outs, uh, Sky Zone, apparently middle school kids love Sky Zone. So now we know that we're going to have like five Sky Zone nights. Like we're just going to go to Sky Zone and not fundraise. Right um, and then all of our other things are raising um, some good money. Go to the next slide. Um, this is a little bit about what we fund. It's kind of, um, and that's another thing we're, we're learning, like talking to the principal, talking to the teachers, like, what do you need? What would you like us to fund? Where can we give you money for? Because at Mercury Mind, we give every teacher $500 to spend on whatever they want. We can't do that here, but we want to get the money out where it belongs. So it's a lot of asking questions. I hate it when I see a donors choose um, campaign for a teacher at my school that needs money for something. And I'm like, oh, we have all this money. Just ask us. Let's get it. I want to get the money out to the teachers um, as fast as possible. All right, next slide. Um, so the, the the lesson that I'm learning in middle school is engagement, like no meetings, like nobody's coming to your meeting in middle school, okay? <laughs> no one's helping you. Like it's always the same six people, seven people on your board, whatever, doing all the work. Just get over it and go with it. Don't have meetings, don't expect them to come. We have a couple meetings, they're online. They're 45 seconds long. I mean, we <laughs> read the minutes, we approve the minutes, we vote in a new board. Like, don't, don't expect help. It's middle school. <laughs> it's true. Like, don't get your feelings hurt. You know, if you lower your expectations, you won't get your feelings hurt. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can email me at my work email. It's just Aaron at treering.com. I sell yearbooks. If anyone needs yearbooks, call me. <laughs> I created tree ring for our school. Yay! Because that in Chicago. So. Awesome. I love, I love that. Yeah. Are you talking about Pledge Star? How much do you guys have to pay them? Yeah. So Pledge Star is like a, it's a small percentage per transaction. Um, I'm not sure the exact, but it's not 
you know. So it's just per transaction. Yeah, I think I think it's a flat fee actually. Um, and it covers your uh, credit card processing yeah. fees as well. So it kind of yeah. And then there's always that button like, do you want to help the school out by you know covering the transaction fees? Mm -hmm. And well, if you're not a nice person, <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't click yeah. that button? Who doesn't help the school out by covering that transaction fee? So a lot so. of you guys use it. Yeah, I love and the idea of just paying for Laura yeah. and doing all the money. And it just it just takes a, a person or a couple of people to be there to deliver popsicles, be there to deliver cookies. Yeah. But at middle school, you don't have to like, you know, stand there and hand out. Like I can give them to the teacher's aide or whoever, and they can do that kind of stuff. So it's just because um, my whole board works full time. I work full time. Um, you know, it's about having the manpower and just being ready with those popsicles. And you need to pre-order popsicles. If you're looking for 500 popsicles, you don't want to go to five stores, get the Bashes guys number and say, hey, in two weeks, I'm going to need 500 of the same popsicles because God forbid somebody wants a red one <laughs> and somebody wants a green one. Just get the same ones. Um, so pre-order your popsicles. Any other <laughs> comments online? Erin, this is amazing. You are amazing. And I'm working on my tree ring yearbook now. Yes. <laughs> I love you. Um, <laughs> yes. Best yearbooks. Best yearbooks ever. That's just a, a whole side gig I have. My real my real job. Um, but thank you all for what you do. You're all important and valuable in your school. Yeah. Um, I've heard that you guys, I, I don't know if it's you guys, but there's a, um, a feeder school dance. Yes. Is that you guys putting yeah. it on? Yeah. So that was like whoo, sprung on us at the last minute. Um, but that wasn't put on by us, but we'll support it this year. Um, I think all we did last year was like give water bottles um, and maybe somebody came. But the feeder school dance was cool because they invited all four feeder, feeder schools yeah. that feed into Shea to come, you know, new seventh graders like come. And then there was just like a little gathering, but it was, I heard reports, it was awkward. It was like, you know, that school was over here and that school's, you know, but it's good to have them mingling. And I love any opportunity for them to be on campus and get comfortable because middle school is awkward. Like rolling out that first day is, is a little bit weird. So, but Shay does a really good job and their teachers are, are dedicated and the principal is amazing and everybody's just, so I was a little nervous going in there, but um, now I'm not. So I'll be at the high school next year. <laughs> and whoever gets her is lucky. That high school. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow Mountain, I'm coming for you. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to this slide because this is the, the best transition over to parents of Pinnacle. Yes. Um, coming to talk about how they do their meetings. Because get this, guys, they hold three meetings a year. Okay. So you just, Wait. You let us into this. Yes, yes so don't have okay. each three meetings. Three yeah. meetings a year. So, so we're getting <laughs> no, then I can't miss one. Three <laughs> meetings a year. We, we, have, we have no slides. We have no slides. It's you. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, we, <laughs> um, we are from Pinnacle High School. Um, I am Tila Schwartz. I'm the president. I've been president this year. I was vice president for the three years prior. And I was an explorer for two years, president, vice president, and then at wildfire, same thing. So I've been moving my way up. This is my last year. I'm Nisha Shah. I am the treasurer. Was last year too. Um, I was that explorer and at Fireside. Actually, I am still at Fireside, but both of my children are not at Fireside. They're still <laughs> yeah, she's very dedicated. <laughs> so, um, so we. Um, walked into the the PTO or Parents of Pinnacle um, with it running this way. We really have not done more than what has been set upon us. In our bylaws, it says three meetings. The beginning of the school year, which we also have a booster club meeting because we are the umbrella for all the other for all booster clubs, booster in, clubs in the high school. Um, so we are required to have a meeting at the beginning of the year for them and then also any parents that show up and usually it's the parents that were at the booster club. Yeah, meeting. it's the same face. It, yes, just, yeah. like, you never out. see anyone new. And then um, our next meeting is after the winter break, just to kind of set up any of the, the stuff that's going on. Which is usually just the board. <laughs> if we have three extra people there, it's surprising. And then our last meeting is in the spring. Um, and we have a little more yeah. there. Because of grant money. 
because we put on grad night for our seniors as uh, big investors. And so we have more of the parents that step in and say, I want to help, what can I do? Mm -hmm. um, anything that we do, we already have it on the calendar. Um, there's very few things that we add throughout the year. We have um, membership drive in August. Um, in September, we have our meeting. And um, October, we have parent-teacher conference. With this year, we did add treats to the parent-teacher conference. So that was one thing that, as a board, we communicated through email and text saying, hey, we're going to do this and a sign up genius. Then we sent out to the parents saying, hey, we're going to bring treats in for the parent teacher conferences. Can anybody help? Um, at that time, we also had two people step into the position of, of teacher appreciation, teacher appreciation, which we did not have. Um, pretty much it was us five running everything because it's high school. Um, yeah, we love email, text. Planet Genius and our favorite new thing is um, Amazon wish list. Because <laughs> everything you put on there always gets bought and it gets delivered to school. We show up to kind of set it up, but it works wonders. I even use it for prizes for uh, grad night. Because we do all night, starting on grad night all the way to five. And there's tons and tons of money in prizes that get given out. And that's what we need all the money for. And we have a, so fundraising we do is membership and uh, online auction, which is coming up this month. Uh, we had one person last year that ran it all. She kind of stepped aside. So this year we're running it, but um, just, uh, she has a spreadsheet of who to ask for donations and we've been able to do that. So we will have an online fundraiser. It's an auction that we, do, but we're not allowed to auction except for the fundraiser. Um, that raises most of our money. Mm -hmm. And um, you can auction, we just can't raffle. Right. <laughs> yeah, we auction. Yeah. Um, so pretty much we function on three meetings a year. That is why we're standing here. Mm -hmm. And, and there's like an hour, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's what us sweeping around. <laughs> yeah. right. so. I think it's all like with membership, they've got it down with like the forms where just like everybody does. Are you interested in doing this or that? So it's just a matter of organizing, hey, who can be there for parent night? You yeah. know, so we'll stand there at a table and hand out flyers for membership and stuff and of course QR codes and everything. Mm -hmm. And then just who signed up, call them. That's how you yeah. got like the teacher appreciation, then you do a sign up genius, and that person gets all the food. And but yeah, Amazon wish list and sign up genius, like that's that, right. Yeah, because we, we know that people love to donate stuff, they just don't want to be there. All your and then we'll put it together because it's a lot easier to do that than have to go find it. Mm -hmm. And then for teacher appreciation too, the Amazon wish list, I think has been the most effective. I've been at Pinnacle, this is my eighth year, and it's always been like this. So I don't know how or who originally set it up, but it was phenomenal, especially because everybody's got their booster. Mm -hmm. That's but, really busy. And for teacher appreciation, I think we came up with the Amazon wish list a few years ago. We did an explore, and that was yeah. pandemic that made it really good. Yeah. That, that changed it up. and. And I'm the only thing I'm trying to figure out is if there's a way to to shorten the delivery window. Usually they're really smart; they know it's a school and when delivered during school. Occasionally I'll get a phone call: "We're here to deliver, and it's 8 p.m. <laughs> Leave it; I'm coming, and I'll go get it." But most of the time they're really good at just delivering it all to the office. They keep it for us, and we'll throw it into the closet. And the office is really helpful because we'll send out newsletters once a month. Um, just hey, this is what's going on. Um, this is what we need help with. If anybody wants to step into this position, and here's the sign of geniuses, here's the dates on stuff. And the office, um, Dr. Smith is really good mm -hmm. sending things out when we need them. Hey, we need this sent out this week because we have the parent teacher conference and we have, you know, three things donated. And then parents donate it. So, oh, clear the clutter too. Clear the clutter. We do the, the goodwill drive twice a year. It's just getting those dates off. And 
project grad. I don't know if anyone's heard because I think that's a huge thing. That's kind of like our our main what what we do. What we spend yes. our money. So yeah, it's um an overnight party mm -hmm. basically for all the seniors graduating. So yeah, Dave and Busters. Um, it's a ton of volunteers, it's a ton of money. Um, but that's kind of what our options and everything do. And again, everything's kind of run through email, sign up mm -hmm. genius, volunteering. So it's just people and Dr. Smith sending out the thing. So like literally, like we have people checking in. They're, the seniors go graduate. They have to be usually at Dave and Buster's checked in by door seven or eleven. Yeah. Bag check. Like they don't take bags in. So we've got volunteer chaperones that rotate the entire night. We do, we've got minute to win it. We, you know, prizes and raffle drawings. Oh. No, the prizes no, are not. huge. How many thousands do we send in prizes? Yeah. Like sometimes it's five hundred dollars cash or mm -hmm. a laptop or you know, TV, big stuff. TV and that's the yeah, yeah, that's the big the final drawing at 4 a.m. But they have to be present to win, which is funny to watch yeah. some of them. And awake. <laughs> actually asleep in a very loud crowded hot stuffy room at 4 a.m 5 a.m it's it's hilarious but that's kind of like our main thing but it's all run through just email sign up genius and the designated people who are going and actually yeah you know you, know, you people <laughs> yeah everybody like the ones who amazing. get it done but it's just like the channels have been set it's just any question? Official. <laughs> the question for high school and middle school. My kid loves being a PTO kid. Do they still love being PTO? <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> super cringy and middle yeah. school. Yeah. Mine doesn't yeah. care. Mine's not fair, but that's it. Just what they need. Yeah. <laughs> they assume if I walk by, they're like, what do you I'm not allowed to go watch the game. <laughs> 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 okay. My kid's thrilled that I have a different last name. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it just depends, I think. Yeah. And you really don't see them if you show up at school. Yeah. yeah. There are way, way too many kids. Behind the scenes. And so you're there and you've gone. Even, even at the Dave and Buster's, like, yeah. I went with my grad, my graduate last year. Yeah. Other than the fact that he's like, can I, can you hold this? I don't think <laughs> I ever saw him. Yeah. <laughs> my twins are, well, one of them probably won't make it up awake long enough to check in, but the other is like, are you going to be there? I'm like, do you want this to happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and literally, like, we just we have different jobs, and we say, I'll be here. You go there, yeah. and <laughs> ultimately, like, they end up coming and say hi. I'm saying hi to the friends too. Yeah. That's sweet, but just reiterate, like, do you want this to happen, or I don't want to see you either. You're <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Let us know we Okay, and that was my favorite part because I so my high school, uh, Paradise Valley High School, does not do just three meetings a year. Oh, no. And between the PTO meetings and my crazy. booster club meetings, which are separate, that is six meetings a month. Oh my god! Do you see why she asked us to come? <laughs> There's a motive. Okay, this is real fast. I think you guys all know this, but I want to make sure everybody is aware because I do have parent group leaders in the room. Make sure that you are sending in your certificate of liability annually. It has to be updated. So for going into next year, when we come in, in August, give them a new one. It has to be at least a million dollars. Um, when you have vendors coming onto your campus, they also have to have the certificate of insurance. Uh, the district needs to be named on it, not your school site. That's the most common reason your certificate of insurance will be rejected. Uh, when you are doing anything on the campus uh, after school hours, there's different rules for during school hours as opposed to after school hours. There are certain forms you have to fill out. I've linked them in here. Uh, if you're doing outdoor events and you're on a field, there's a special form for the field. If, as a PTO or a parent group organization, you want to hire an off-duty police officer, you are 100% entitled to do that, depending on where you live. There's the two different uh, forms for Scottsdale and Phoenix to be able to hire them to come on. Uh, don't forget, you can always hire custodians as well. You just have to make sure you do that. They're asking for two weeks in advance. More is better, especially if you want your own on-site 
custodian as opposed to someone else's custodian from someplace. Outside lights, big giant lights that light up a field, you can rent those from the district. Your uh, admin person needs to contact uh, Sarah Hamrick and that's how they get those lights. If you do this, I don't know if anyone's ordered lights before, order them a month in advance, then follow up two weeks ahead of time, then follow up 13 days and 12 days and the day before and the day of and an hour before they're supposed to arrive, call again. Every single time I have ordered lights, I have been, I, that hour before phone call has gone like this. Hi, I have lights. Are they still coming in an hour? Oh, we forgot. <laughs> Every single time. So follow up a lot. Uh, and then if you are using concession stands, you may need to do permits, uh, most specifically a food handler's license. So if you are using a concession stand at the middle school or high school level, please double check on all of that. And again, we will send the slides out. So if you need any of this, you can have it. And again, oh, I was just told about a new carnival requirement too, to pre-run all the activities by district before they will issue a permit and risk management will review. Yeah. That's See, haven't added that. They have not officially added that. Anywhere? So that's <laughs> yeah. a rumor right now. Well, that's, that's, rumor. that's what Terry called and told my, told my admin. So I can't be mine because he's already back. So, all right. I guess I didn't say anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't say anything. <laughs> so when you hear <laughs> that, yeah, you're good. Back to the prize. I have not heard that. I'll just say that. They have not made that one. When I checked this week about what forms, these were the forms that they officially told me about. They did not tell me about that. Do you know if all those forms have to be the, if the parent who's been doing it, but the kids are doing it, what happened? If um, a student government organization is doing something, they have an entirely different set of stuff. So if they do their own, we don't yeah. have to worry about it. There's, um, the facilities use agreement, the top of that form identifies whether you're a class one, class two, class three organization and what you have to do depending on your type of thing. Okay. Most of your events as a parent group organization, you're just filling out a form. You don't have, you, you very, you're not doing very much. Um, the critical part is that at the beginning of the year, you've turned in your $1 million certificate of liability insurance. That's what's critical. And then after that, most of the rest of your forms are pretty easy to fill out. Um, I will say that making sure you do the facilities use agreement is really important for after hours events because that's what makes sure that you have air conditioning and in filling out your use of fields form is super important because that's what makes sure they don't turn the sprinklers on in the middle of your event. So yes, it's forms, no one likes filling them out, but you definitely want air conditioning and you do not want sprinklers turning on. So, all right guys, that's it. We'll see you next month for uh, Kid in the Corner. And we really appreciate all of our schools for being here. Hopefully you guys got the, the email for putting in your own school garden. Amber will help you with that. We learned that Borrows gives us 25% off. I did not know that. And please do your parents a favor and switch to being three meetings a year. They will love it for it. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. I don't I didn't want to end it. I want to talk about she might